Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Us. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, my good friends? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Thank you for joining us today. If you are brand new, welcome to the show. We have over 500 episodes of helpful marriage content, growth mindset, self-improvement content, and you are in the right place. So thank you very much. And we got a good topic today. That's right. So today we are answering a listener question that says, my wife and I have drifted apart and are starting to feel more like roommates. What do I do? So Mm. that gave me the thought that we are going to title today's episode, Five Ways to Get Closer to Your Spouse. That's right. And you guys don't know how many times I have heard this from coaching clients and especially especially marriage therapy clients just feel like roommates. I don't know. It's like we do our stuff and just going through the motions. I go to work and she goes to work and we eat dinner and it's just Mm kind of boring and we watch a show and then now we're in a show hole and now we don't have a show. (laughs) Now we're in a food hole because we don't know where to eat. (laughs) Right. And you know, sometimes you have kids and you're just kind of going through the motions, but we're not meant to live just to go through the motions. We're meant to live with zap and zest. And, it's, and life's awesome. So we're supposed to be awesome in our life. And here's right. five amazing ways to do it. Because again, we've been there. We have to- tons and tons of clients who have been there. So we wanted to give you these five points to make it happen in your life. So number one, point number one to getting closer to your wife or your husband after you're drifting apart or feeling like roommates is to shake it up to break it up. Mm. Okay, so you have to just... Get out of your rut. You got to get out of your routine. You have to go new places, try new foods, talk about new mm-hmm. things, play for the love of Pete. Play like just talk about that idea of adding in play to your marriage and talk about what we've done to shake it up, to break it up. OK, so again, I'm going to reference my work with therapy clients a lot because this happens all the time and I can have the same clients for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's the nothing has changed. And I always tell them, what do I say? I don't know. (laughs) I'm not there (laughs) with those clients. Nothing changes if nothing changes. There we go. Well, but I can't. But if you felt depressed like I did, and I'm not discounting depression, of course, Mm -hmm. but sometimes you just have to do something different. Yes, I agree. Hey, I feel like crap. I'm going to walk outside. Like, (laughs) I'm serious. I'm not even messing. I'm going to walk outside. I'm going to take my shoes off and walk in the grass. Although it's November, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Trust me. It's probably more exhilarating if you do it in November or the winter months than be in the summer months. I love that you use that word. It's exhilarating. (laughs) Well, maybe not. But the point of that is because I hate it when I hear content or people and they just say, well, just, just, just do it. Right. But the actual truth to that is do something different. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying everything that we say will work. Do something different because if nothing changes in this landscape, nothing will change. In fact, guess what you can look forward to? The same. The same. Mm -hmm. Feeling more like a roommate. Mm -hmm. Oh, then guess what? Because if you're married, you're not supposed to feel like roommates. Guess who else moves in? Resentment. Oh. Right? And then you go, ugh, just roommates. And that's not Ooh, good. I hate this. We don't no, do I'm anything serious. fun. I'm serious. It can gradually build into resentment, yeah. and then then you're in a bad place, right? So shake it up. Can, I wanna, Wake up. Yeah. Can we use a funny example? May I share something I from our personal life? As if we don't do that already, <laughs> but yeah. yes. So one of the things that Seth started doing lately, which I really loved, I really really appreciate it, is mm-hmm. we. So sometimes when we see each other, uh, we may have talked about this in a show. I don't think we have yet, though. No. But we, we would see each other. In the house. So I'd come mm. down for my coffee. Seth would already be at the table. And you would make like like a ninja face at me. Oh, you right. would do like karate chop hands, mm-hmm. squinty eyes, like, I'm going to get you. Right. Kind of like that. But it was like, not bad, but it was it had an energy. You want to explain the energy it well, had? Well, the energy was, hey, this is, it's, al- it's almost like the physical form of being sarcastic. Mm-hmm. Basically, hey, I'm going to chop you. Right. <laughs> hey, I'm not really going to chop you, right? <laughs> But, oh, that gets your attention. That gets you to engage. So now we're having a little playful stuff, right? Chop sesh. But guess what? A chop sesh. That is easier. Doing that, ninja hands, squinty eyes, is way, way, way easier than going, oh, good morning. Come here. Give me a hug. Mm -hmm. And you kiss and stuff. (laughs) That Why? Because I'm a little bit vulnerable if Mm -hmm. I go, oh, I want to hug you. Good morning. How are you? And if you're in a bad mood or whatever, I'm putting myself out there, right? Mm -hmm. So, but is it more rewarding? Does it feel better than ninja hands? Wait, hold on. You didn't say what the it is. You didn't say what the does what feel more rewarding. Oh, we celebrate each other. Now. When you come home. I'm sorry. when, When you come downstairs, 
we celebrate each other in a loving way and mm-hmm. go, oh, there she is. Look at her. She's so beautiful. Look. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. And then we clap for each other, which sounds really silly. <laughs> well, let me say, though, because you <laughs> caught like you said, you mm-hmm. walked up to me one day and you went, you know, this is going to sound silly, but I think it's important. And I'm like, OK, what is it? And he goes, when we greet each other and we do like ninja hands, he's like, I actually don't think it's as positive as it should be. Like right. we should actually be like. Hey, it's you. It's that guy. Hey, you. There you are. It's you. You know, like little fingers. You mm-hmm. point at each other, and so I was like, okay, I'll give that a try. Why wouldn't Why right. wouldn't we try that? And if Seth brought it up, I'm gonna honor that. And so now, literally, when we see each other, sometimes we have a round of applause. Mm-hmm. And this is like five thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll be like, there he is, or there she is. And so why I'm bringing that up is that we shook it up to brook it up, (laughs) shake it up to break it up, right? Right. We did something different to get out of a rut of feeling like, man, when we see each other, we want to be happier, but we aren't. So how can we change that? Mm -hmm. And yes, it's a forced function, but it's a forced function out of our actual desires and how much we truly love each other. Right. And it has made a difference. Tell people, tell our friends, our best friends, how (laughs) it's made a difference. Well, it's just, it's, it's not only has it lighten the atmosphere because number one it brings positivity into one another's lives mm-hmm. in the morning which if you're starting your day out positive that's a great way to start your day it starts it out with love right mm-hmm. we're sharing something fun with our best friends which th- it's right e- here each other each other right yeah not you guys we love you but <laughs> not as much as this lady um and we're reassuring one another because i'm sure that there have been days when We've only been doing that for probably, I don't know, maybe two and a half months now or something like since the ending of summer um, when you're like, I don't want to clap or something, but then maybe I do it for you and you're like, oh, that was sweet. Yeah. Right. And you just, I don't want to zap fingers this morning. Right. But it lifts up. Yeah. And if you're listening to that and you're cynical about it, like, oh, that's so gross and so lame, then I would challenge you to think about that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you did that to your partner, would they be like, what the F are you doing? Yeah. Right. Or would they go, Hey, that brings mm-hmm. out something in me. Now I want to do it. Right. Right. So we're not doing it for a silly, like trope. Mm-hmm. We're not, we're not doing that. Like I, I wasn't thinking even about talking about on the podcast. I'm mm-hmm. like, Hey, here's a thing in our lives that w- it's like leaving something on the table. Mm-hmm. Right. If, if you went, Oh, whoops, my, there whoops, you go. There we go. If you went to a meeting and you're like, okay, meeting's done. And there was $500 on the table. Yeah. You'd be like, wait a minute, let's take that cash, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to leave anything on the table. That's a, a business saying kind of thing. And I, I realized, wait a minute, we're leaving something on the table. There's oh, an yeah. opportunity to connect. There's an opportunity to lead with positivity and bring positivity. There's a lot of joy. We were leaving a lot, a of, lot joy. of joy on the table. Yes, yes. So I didn't want to leave that on the thing. So number one, shake it up to break it up. Mm-hmm. Get out of your ruts, right? Sometimes... Oftentimes, just do something different, yeah. right? I was talking to a person today, and uh, that one saying, hey, your best thinking has gotten you to this point right here. So sometimes in our marriage, we go through seasons, of course, so not every time, hey, my grandma died. There she is. Let's clap. You know, <laughs> that, it up to break it up. <laughs> obviously, that, that doesn't work. But when we're in a rut or a funk or whatever, your best thinking sometimes has gotten you to where you are. So if you're just roommates your best romantic thinking has gotten you there, mm-hmm. right? So, oh, what else would this look like? Instead of, you know, finger shooters in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even um, know what that is, but I like uh, it. Say, hey, I know we haven't been on a date in a long time. Mm-hmm. We've been kind of roommates, but there's a new restaurant in town. Mm-hmm. Let's go check it out. In fact, if you're the guy, here's a pro tip. Hey, babe. I want to take you out. I made reservations at this new place Mm -hmm. for Friday night. I already took care of the kids. La Casina Steakhouse in Maple Valley or whatever it's called. (laughs) Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking about, actually. I know. I've been to it, right? (laughs) I haven't made plans, though. It's the new restaurant in our town. It is the new restaurant in Maple Valley. (laughs) So, shake it up. Hey, the kids are on summer break. Let's go on a road trip. Mm -hmm. Shake it up. I guess that's not roommate romantic vibes, but it is like you and your oh, yeah. you and your spouse well, like and getting out of town and yeah. doing something different. That's great. Yeah, this leads perfectly to number two mm. in our list today, and that is get curious. You do not know everything there is to know about your partner. I promise you that you don't. So that means in order to get out of that like roommate vibe thing that's going on, start asking questions. Use conversation starters. Like 
watch a show that you wouldn't normally. Okay, here's a great suggestion. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to suggest? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Ancient Aliens, duh. Oh, Ancient Aliens. You could listen to Blurry Creatures together. Let me think. So you could watch Forged in Fire. I have a very limited repertoire. So here's you could watch Indiana Jones and talk about what you thought so about here's, that. So here's a, a pro tip. So Melanie is talking about all these things. If you don't know what ancient aliens are, it's the crazy haired guy that looks <laughs> like he's, you know, it's like he's in a bunch of Joe Rogan memes, right? <laughs> that dude, he's absolutely <laughs> It's the funniest Ridiculous. show to watch ever. But there's about a billion episodes, and Melanie likes <laughs> stuff like that, and blurry creatures, and Bigfoot, and ancient apocalypse, and all that stuff. It's not so much my jam, but husbands or spouse, if you are paying attention, get curious. Hey, Melanie, tell me about ancient Peruvian ruins and how they got there. What would you like to know? Cyclopean architecture? Or exactly. Where do you want to start? See, my, 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 I rest my case. <laughs> so I could go, okay, I want to be a student of my spouse, a student of my wife. I'm paying attention to stuff that she talks about. And reposts, you know, online or whatnot. Oh, hey, what is that? Tell me about this stuff. You could ask me the same about archery, mm -hmm. about bow hunting, mm -hmm. about going back to Molokai in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's your strategy this time since you shot twice and missed? <laughs> <laughs> Seth went axes deer hunting in right. Hawaii. That's what he's fake crying about. Hey, Ryan Mickler missed the first time and he went and he didn't get anything <laughs> either. So I'm, I'm all right. But he got something this time. Anyway... Be a student of your spouse. Get curious. Yeah. And I think, again, conversation starters are a great place to start. You can buy decks of cards. You can find them all over. They're online. They're in apps. Like there's no lack of ability to have a conversation starter at your fingertips so that you can ask questions that you wouldn't normally think to ask. And again, even just taking the time to be interested in what your spouse is interested in. So, for example, I watch Meat Eater with Seth or who's the other guy? Uh, you guys watch a couple different ones, don't you? Who's the other bow hunters and stuff like that? I can't remember no, the names. There's a uh, bunch of them. Cam Haynes. There's yeah, a bunch. Yeah. But so I, I will watch those shows or watch the, them on their social media things and talk to Seth about it and share like, I just read a book called The Comfort Crisis and the guy went hunting in Alaska. You've been to Alaska. You go hunting, right? So mm -hmm. trying to... Um, I think of like a fishing line. Like I'm, I'm trying to make a connection. I'm baiting a, a hook to talk well, to you that on reminds purpose. Me, um, John Gottman talks about that's a bid yeah. for connection, mm -hmm. right? And so in this, so you're doing wrong if your spouse is bidding for connection all the time and you're just shutting them away. That will cause major problems. But when they stop doing that bid, then you have even bigger problems, right? right? So get curious mm -hmm. and. If you see your spouse getting curious, hey, tell me about so-and-so. Mm -hmm. That is an opportunity that they want to connect, talking about something that they you wouldn't talk about archery if it mm -hmm. weren't for me, no, right? No, uh -uh. I wouldn't talk about crazy-haired ancient <laughs> aliens if it weren't for you, <laughs> yeah, right? You would. Yeah, yeah. So we're, you would if you got abducted. <laughs> <laughs> so we're studying each other, we're knowing what they like, and then we're asking more questions, and all in uh, hopes of getting closer to your spouse mm -hmm. and getting into your rut and not feeling like roommates. All right. Getting out of your rut, you mean? <laughs> you said getting into your rut. Yeah. Your new rut. Maybe that's what you there mean. There you go. Uh, okay. Your so new then, neural pathway. That's exactly right. So then number three is to da -da -da -da, create a vision board. And people have talked about vision boards a lot. Like you see them on Pinterest, whatever. But create one for your marriage. I don't know if people talk about this very often, but mm -hmm. creating a shared vision and literally putting it on a vision board is an awesome, fun thing to do. Seth and I have one. It hangs in our hallway at the end of our stairs. It's huge. I got like a poster frame from Ikea printed off a bunch of things that we wanted to accomplish, a home we want to build, podcasts we want to be on, like people we want to be interviewed by. And I created a giant dream vision board collage for our marriage and our business that hangs like art in our house. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's really cool because, well, number one, if you haven't done something like this in your relationship, you're going to learn a lot about your partner. So let's pretend that we had never done a vision board and like actually think of all the things that are hanging in our bedroom too. So mm -hmm. we have kind of like our vision board is like spread throughout our house. So what is in our, our, uh, where our clothes are in our closet? Like, do you remember what's on those walls right there? What are the pictures of? Do you know? Travel destinations mm -hmm. with friends. Yeah. So I photoshopped <laughs> pictures <laughs> of Seth and I and our, some of our best friends. I photoshopped pictures of us in Mexico because mm -hmm. I've never been to Mexico and I really want to go. 
uh, like on a blurry expedition maybe to Mexico. Oh, but I anyway, know. so I photoshopped photos of us in these different locales and it gave us an opportunity to be like, where would you go? Like if we were creating a dream vision board and as a couple, we went on a vacation somewhere mm-hmm. It gives us an opportunity to talk about it in a new way that we never had before because it wasn't even like on our radar to talk about. We're just thinking about like, did the dog poop and is our kid enrolled in math, you know, like lessons or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so this gives us an opportunity to have a conversation. Well, why do you want to go to Mexico? What's fun to you there? What's blah, 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 all that. Okay. Why do you want to go to Mexico even? Ancient ruins. No. Chichen Itza. Before you found out about all that. Now this is, this is a real time question. Why? Hey, we just did our thing. There's tons of pictures of Mexico and cenotes and all this stuff and this and that. Why? What's up with that, Mel? Well, I want to go to a cenote, but I'm afraid of cenotes because they were typically ancient ritual locations where they would sacrifice people. Great. So you don't want to swim in one. But I want to see them. I want to go to Mexico. It seems beautiful. Food looks awesome. Looks like it's going to taste delicious to my tongue. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just want to go there. Right. I want to be there. Okay. Is there more questions than that? <laughs> no, nope, just a, a real time thing. So ask me why I like uh, United Arab Emirates and oh, Dubai yeah. and uh, Emirates That's Airlines. On your vision board, he has a, a Dubai. Wait, and y- what is it? United it's Arab A380. Emirates Airlines thing with the lady holding with a little hat on. Right. So why do you like that so much? Why do I you want to go know, there? But I just do. <laughs> <laughs> so you set me up for that. <laughs> well, I've been there once. I want to. I want to take you guys. Did like, you say once? Yeah. As a as a stopover for I I've always liked what's on uh, what do you go through oh, Dubai oh, to okay, reach so so here it, uh, it's a gateway to Asia Petra yes for one what about for two or you can go to Qatar or Kuwait either one <laughs> anyway okay. Uh, so okay so that that spurns the conversation hey Seth why do you have all these airplanes on your vision board and big city destinations because. When I was younger, my grandma used to take me to the airport and we would watch planes land. We would have a wonderful picnic and spend time with my grandma mm. um, and just watch planes land. That's and it was fun. great. Yeah. I loved it, right? Oh, so <laughs> because you asked me about a vision board, hey, why is that on your vision board? I could tie it back to that. I don't know why I mm-hmm. like it. I just do. It's great. It's right. fascinating. I could learn about it all day. Well, and what's right? fun too, and connecting this back to this idea of like, I don't want to feel like roommates with my spouse. When you, we've been married for almost 20 years. <laughs> we've, been, we've been together for 20 years. And the way to not feel like a roommate, if you've been together that long, is to do stuff that makes, that pulls you out of your comfort zone. Not mm. Now that's like, I say that to myself. I don't want to go to the UAE. I don't know even what's there. I don't care about it. I don't dislike it. I just don't. It's not Mexico. Okay. There ain't any ancient Chichen Itza ruins there. Well, there probably are. There but are. you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to care about what he cares about, I have to get out of my comfort zone. And that is a great thing. That is a great thing for our relationship. Mm -hmm. People who don't get out of their comfort zone say stagnant, stale, unhappy. Again, nothing changes, nothing changes. And it's the people that need to change, the mindset that needs to change. Think about it this way. And I just thought, and a lot of stuff on our vision board has come true, but I was just thinking of one in particular. I had a picture of a dude trail running Mm -hmm. down a thing on a rocky trail running, right? He's fit. He's, you know, whatever. Seth has photos of men in his (laughs) vision board. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not going to say, <laughs> I'm not going there. Keep on. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, uh, so what did that get me into? Got me into trail running. Mm-hmm. Got me into, I'll say long distance running, but my friends who really run long distances will make fun of me. But compared <laughs> to most people I know, I do long run long distances. Right. So that got me into distance running, which got me into what? Uh, tough mutter, a tough mutter, mm-hmm. which got you into tough mutter mm-hmm. and Mariner and tough, our kid, you know, you see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So one thing on a vision board can be connected. Mm-hmm. I mean, it took about a year and a half for that, but it, it's not an instant board. It's a vision <laughs> board, right? For a long term <laughs> thing. So that that's, funny. that's the power of it. So create a vision board, not only for yourself, cause I would highly encourage that, but for your marriage as well. Yeah. Where do you want to go? What do you want to be like? Mm-hmm. What's your everything? Yeah. What and do you want your family again, to if look you're like? like? If you are in a rut, the hardest part of this practice is probably going to be like lovingly accepting and being excited for something that you don't understand. Maybe you don't care about and that is off of your radar. Like it's not interesting to you. 
But if you can throw yourself into being interested in what your spouse is interested in in a new way without being mean, without putting them down for it, without being like, oh my gosh, Indiana Jones, that's so dumb. You want to go to Cheats and Nitsa? How lame. Like, don't do that. Well, People I don't think hopefully nobody would do that. I uh, know uh, our, some of our best friends who are like that. Your mom? Paul. Just kidding. <laughs> Not Paul. But uh, we have friends that literally, if I said I wanted to do something like that, they'd be like, ew, that's really gross. Oh, right. You know what I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, so don't put your spouse down when you're trying to create this vision board. That's part of the rut that you're in. That is part of the cycle is putting them down for that. So anyway, number four, we're going to practice gratitude every single day on purpose and for a purpose. So mm. what to you does practicing gratitude look like, you think? That means keeping a journal. That means, and I've been doing this for quite a long minute, when I wake up, first thing when I wake up, it's at 5 a.m. almost every single day. Wake up when my two feet hit the ground, right? I say, thank you. Tootsies hit the ground. Tootsies. Right foot, thank. Left foot, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who am I thanking? Number one, I'm thanking God and Jesus, right? But then on the bigger picture, well, you can't get much bigger than God, but <laughs> in the cumulative picture, I'm thankful that I had a warm bed. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful that you slept next to me. I'm thankful that I have an alarm clock. Or an Apple phone that wakes me up. I'm thankful that I have a purpose to go to mm -hmm. and to do stuff. I'm thankful that the kids mm -hmm. slept warmly in their bed. Mm -hmm. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Rather than being like, oh, uh, I gotta get out of bed. Sometimes I've really been in that rut. Like just the the wave of anxiety and depression just mm -hmm. hits you, and you're like, you instantly start thinking about all the stuff you have to do, mm -hmm. right? So the 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 earth, the world, just downloads. All the stuff that's on your shoulders for the day. Mm -hmm. And that is not a good way to wake up, you guys. So if you can force yourself to just find something to be thankful for. Um, who was it? Uh, I can't remember, but um, I think it was. I don't remember the guy's name, but he was like, oh, I'm thankful I'm on the wake up list yeah. today. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it was Anthony O'Neill. Yes. Uh, with Dave Ramsey personality. Um, uh, I'm. Th hey, thanks. I was on the wake up list today. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm good. I'm here. Everything else is, you know, whatever, but at least I woke up mm -hmm. because some people don't. Right. Understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. And every single morning, I'm assuming that you do gratitude journaling every morning. I don't know. Do yeah. You? Yeah. I, I, well, yes, that's that's another part. And then come down and like also this has a big part uh, about your daily routine, which is yeah. uh, point number five. Well, and we're yeah, th I'm asking because in my planner that I use that I made for myself, uh, gratitude is one of the first things that you do every day. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is that when you do a written gratitude practice every single day, you start to get like, well, I can't just say like, I'm thankful for my house anymore. Mm -hmm. And you have to become more granular about it. And it's really cool. Like it, it stretches your mind to be like, what am I thankful for? Oh, and I actually, when I came in here, what was, what did I tell you? I was thankful for. You were thankful that today was like the first real day of rain. And in the Pacific Northwest, December 4th, it being the real first real day of rain is we're about a month and a half late. Right. And you were thankful because it's been beautiful, insane it's been sun, sun since and then. warm for right. months. And I was like, I am so thankful that today's the first like actual dark, gloomy, rainy day, because yeah. that means we've had a month and a half of sun that we never usually have. And now we have a literal, they call it an atmospheric river. Oh, Coming that's through. happening right now? Yeah, oh, it's, great. It's like the next three days, is we're going to get like three inches of we're rain. We're going to refill that, those water reservoirs. Yeah. I suppose it'll be good. Three inches in two days or something. With an atmospheric river. I'd never heard that until I moved out here. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's like, That's oh, the Sky River that it's goes a sky through. Sky River. That's yeah. we the own. Mississippi above us right now. Yeah. Which is funny. But the point is <laughs> a gratitude practice. Because seriously, guys, let's really, really get real. If you <clears throat> are even listening to this podcast, I could name 50 billion things that you have that somebody else may not have. Number one, the ability to hear, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're reading it closed captions, the ability to see. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm thankful for that. I would rather have that than not. So mm -hmm. that's cool, right? The, you have an iPhone, you have earbuds, you have internet, you have electricity. If you're listening to this, you probably have a spouse who you have had good times with, hopefully, right? Mm. Be thankful for that. You're alive. You're awake. You probably have a job. You probably ate. You probably drank a coffee today. There are eight zillion things to be thankful for. And don't go, 
uh, I always think the the opposite of what I'm saying for some reason for those people out there as cynical as I am, basically. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's easy for you. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's not always easy, but you got to start somewhere. Right. If you're in a rut, shake it up. Back to point number one. Mm-hmm. Understand what I'm saying? So do something different. If you never practice gratitude, practice gratitude. Because mm-hmm. guess what? If you didn't have what you are taking for granted, I guarantee you, you'd be like, I wish I had that thing today. Mm. Okay. So I get, get, I usually get to the gym around six Oh five, right? Get there pitch black. I'm only wearing shorts and a t-shirt because I just go in. Right. And all my gear is there because I take a shower right before I go see clients and stuff like that. Go up to the door. (laughs) Locked. No one is there. No one told me it wasn't going to be open, right? I'm like, I would rather this door open than not right now. I'd rather take a shower and do my normal routine and go to the sauna and have a coffee today. Mm -hmm. But it didn't happen, right? So guess what? I will be thankful that it's open tomorrow. But I kind of course corrected and found another gym and went to. Mm -hmm. And it was fine. It was inconvenient, but it was fine. But the point is, small things that you take for granted... If they're gone, you will miss them. So it is better to get out ahead of that and go, man, I'm thankful for the gym. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's an awesome gym. You know, wanna, just yeah. stuff like that. And that's trivial, of course. I'm it's thankful, not trivial I'm at all. I'm thankful you're alive. Oh, I'm thankful I didn't crash on the way home. I'm thankful my tire didn't blow out. Oh, I'm thankful the kids came in. I mm-hmm. uh, saw one kid get home from school, came to get something from the um, studio. I'm glad he came home mm-hmm. today. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Right. So in my journal, I mean, you could look at my journal right now and go, it all starts with, thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. And then I just do a list. Sometimes it gets boring, but then I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, those boring blessings. Got to list those again. I know. So that that makes you, that makes you think again. So I wish I had an anti-gratitude wand. Like I could wave an anti-gratitude wand and be like, earth doesn't need one. Well, listen, if, if people are struggling to be like, well, what do I have to be thankful for? Like if I could just go boom and take it all away from them and be like, tell me now, what do you have to be thankful for? I don't know. Running water, sanitation, a car, Food, money, shoulders, friends. <laughs> yeah, shoulders. All right. Um, anyway, so that's number four. Practice gratitude every single day on purpose for a purpose. Don't make me use my anti-gratitude wand. Um, number five on our list of things to do to create, uh, get closer to your spouse and to not feel like roommates is to buy the power couple planner. Do you want to know why? Right here. You see this, guys? Because the power couple planner has everything in it that we just talked about all in one spot. Like no joke, it's all there. I've spent a year creating this thing. We are selling it like hotcakes this year. It's amazing. I've got all of the things tabbed. I could show you all of the bits and pieces in here. But really, this is where everything that we've just t- talked about lies. There's conversation starters, 100 date night ideas. There's 230 conversation starters. There's tracking weekly dates. So literally, all that we had talked about, it's in here. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Get curious. Talk about something. Okay. Well, here's conversation there's a da- There's a weekly Let's gratitude see. practice that you write down so you can track it. Like, Hey, Mel, what's your favorite <laughs> dessert? Oh, well, th- is this like our historic dessert we've had together or just dessert in general? I'll give you two answers. The favorite dessert historically we've had together. I think I know one of them. Oh, let's say it at the same time. We'll say where it was at. One, two, three. Dublin. Ireland. Yeah. Oh, I said Dublin. So, yeah. What yeah. is it? Say it at the same time. One, two, three. Creme, creme brulee. brulee. Yes. <laughs> it was our creme brulee in we Ireland. Are, we are dorks. It, no, oh, we're in love. We're not dorks. Which is weird because creme brulee, I don't think, is an Irish dessert. It's probably like But our, Italian. our waiter was Italian, remember? Well, it was an Italian restaurant, so. It was great. It was closer to Italy than we are now. <laughs> That's all I care about. <laughs> Am I closer to Italy okay, or not? Okay, so, okay, there, so. Again, you just saw a fun points, example. Point being, that's the Me thing. do a conversation. Oh, you're going to do one. Okay, okay, quickly. If you could make up a crazy dream job, what would it be? Oh, boy. <laughs> I know what your crazy dream job would be. Well, I don't even know. I'm going to tell you what your best crazy dream job would be of airplane tester. You just ride in the airplanes to go places and fiddle with all the gadgets and go anywhere, but only for 737s. No, 737s are boring. 747s. 747s, yes. And 777s. Seven, seven, yes, that one too. And Airbus 8. A380. A380. 
<laughs> uh, that's funny, but um, I really like what we do right now. Well, that was so, cute. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> um, so that's the truth. But anyway, okay, so again, number five. Number five says buy the Power Couple Planner, but I will explain that. It is number five, get intentional around this stuff. I felt like Donald Trump. See, this is the best. No, okay, stop. <laughs> get intentional <laughs> about your marriage, right? Okay, let's I'm gonna I'm gonna just wave a wand and like redo all this stuff. Hey, I feel gross and out of shape and I can't even walk two feet. Mm. Mm, that's the name of the podcast. Okay, get intentional. Get out of your rut. Do something different. Nothing changes if nothing changes, right? Oh, I can't even walk two feet. Get a exercise app. Get a My Fitness app. Start 75 hard. Uh, get a giant water bottle on Amazon. Do something different, right? It is all connected. Do something different. And this wasn't even in here. You have the choice to do this or not. But you don't know my wife. Oh, you don't know my husband. Uh, eat some. <laughs> you can eat some, right? <laughs> no, I don't know them. That might make it more difficult and more disheartening, but you control you, my gal, my dude. You control you, right? So if they don't do it, you can still do something that live and gets you out of your rut. Mm-hmm. Sometimes right? that if is. If you hated oh, life, if yeah. you hated life, and I was married to you, I would say, listen, I don't know. I don't like how this situation is, but you're not going to steal my joy. <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You and, and and you can say this actually kindly, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, we got one life here. I'm inviting you to live it with me, but I can't live it for you. Mm-hmm. I'm going hunting. I'm going fun doing fun stuff with my kids. I'm going to church. Mm-hmm. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to make new year's resolutions. I'm going to get the power couple planner and do it for myself mm-hmm. because you won't do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't want to say the because you won't do it part because that won't feel well, good. Yeah, you, but you, you won't say I mean. that. But the point of that is you can change things. Mm-hmm. No, pray for your spouse. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. So I just got done reading an amazing book by Sadhguru called Karma. It's really, really good. And he talks about um, most people in the world today suffer from their freedom. We suffer from all the options that we have mm. and the choices and the I freedom. I could talk about that. I know. And so, again, you are in control of your life. Stuff happens to you, but you are in the steering seat. What? You're in the captain's chair? You're in control. You're in charge. You get to call the shots. Even Mm -hmm. when stuff is challenging is going on, you are still in charge. So all of that to say, if you want something to change, you've got to do change. You've got to be the change. You got to go get the power couple planner and don't just get it. Use it. Do it. Oh my gosh. The dogs just got out. Fill it out. Hold on. Okay, you guys. The poodle just ran away. (laughs) We're wrapping it up. Anyway, power couple planner. Go to um, anatomyofus.com. And if you have questions, just like this guy did, and hopefully it's helpful to him and his marriage and his wife, go to email us at hello at anatomyofus.com. That is hello at anatomyofus.com. You guys, let's wrap up 2023. Super awesome and kick it off uh, in a good way in 2024. We love you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.